What up, party people? Welcome back to another episode of Controversial Album Covers. This is episode number 17. Get settled in because it's a long one. Here we go. Rolling Stones, Some Girls. It was released on June 9th, 1978. This is her first album to feature Ronnie Wood as a full member. He did some work on some previous albums, but this is the first one that features him as a full-time member. Peaked at number two on the UK album chart and number one on the US Billboard's LP and tape chart. I don't know if that's just Billboard's or if that's some subsidiary BS thing that they got going on. I, don't, I had never heard of it before, but anyway, who's on? That's pretty impressive considering the Stones were on a downward spiral in 78. Their last two albums, Black and Blue and It's Only Rock and Roll, were meh so much on the charts, mostly because they were getting beat up by the up-and-coming disco and punk rock. They were pretty much the old guys on the scene, which is strange because they're still the old guys on the scene. Uh, but they still were able to get this out and it ended up becoming their best-selling album, so kudos to them. It's even more impressive that this album was made because at the time, in February of 1977, Keith Richards and his uh, partner at the time, Anita Pollenberg, were arrested in Canada for possession of heroin and suspected of drug trafficking. They were facing seven years in prison, so the Rolling Stones were kind of like, well, that's probably going to be the end of the Stones if he goes to jail for seven years. Uh, so, but who should come to their rescue? Jimmy Carter. For those of you who don't know who Jimmy Carter is, I'm looking at you young people. He was the president of the United States, and he was able to get them a visas out of Canada. And so then Keith Richards went to France, and then he ended up over in England where they were able to work on the record. So for all those people out there that said Jimmy Carter didn't do anything during his presidency, suck on that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Go, Jimmy Carter. Uh, so... The other problem, so the other problem with this trial is insane. The judge on the bench was Lloyd Garbin, and he stated, heroin addicts should go to prison if they commit theft to support their habit or make no effort to kick the habit. Richards was different. He made so much money as a rock star, he didn't need to steal, and his, and his effort to remove himself from the drug culture was an example to others. Yes, Keith Richards' example for kicking the drug habit was an example to others. He was given a one-year probation and forced to do a charity concert for the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. Uh, it's a much longer story, but I don't need to go into it because we're not here for that. We're here for the cover. So here it is. This was designed by Peter Corstone and illustrated by Hubert Ketchmir. Uh, Corstone did the next three albums by the Rolling Stones. He also did a bunch of other albums, including Jay Giles, uh, Cheech and Chong's Wedding Album, uh, Rupert Holmes, Grand Funk, and Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti. The actual design of it isn't even his, though. It's, uh, the, it's, 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 he kind of ripped off a, an old Valmore Cosmetics ad, which is funny because Valmore ended up suing him and they got paid because of it. Uh, the other issue with the album is, of course, it has all these celebrities on it and they all sued him, including Lucille Ball, Farrah Fawcett, Liza Minnelli, uh, Judy Garland, who was represented by Liza Minnelli, Raquel Welsh, and the estate of Marilyn Monroe all said, get it out of here. So they said, yee, sorry, ladies my bad and they released this one which took off all the celebrity faces and left off them left on the man members faces if you want to see what that looks like by itself there it is bada boom bada bing um now supposedly they left on they they left one celebrity on here and that's george harrison and these faces are kind of morphed a little bit so it's hard to tell and i'm not exactly sure which one of these is supposed to be george harrison and i'm not a big beatles fan so i wouldn't know anyway uh there are no less than eighty-two thousand versions of this jacket um maybe not quite that many but i can't imagine there's at least 20 different versions because there's color variations so there's this one, which has the bright colors all the way down and, and the celebrities' faces. Then there's bright colors without the celebrity faces. Then there's this muted color with the celebrity faces, muted color without the celebrity faces. And then these colors get all mixed up. And then there's different colors on the top. And there's blah, 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 and the blah. The only album I can think of that actually could even come close to having as many different versions is also on our series. And that is Police's Synchronicity. That has a bazillion and a half versions as well. Most of them are color variations. But again, and there's just an absolute ton of these so be careful which one you have most of the value tends to stay the same this is not the only problem that this silly album had I'll go back to the original one wherever it is uh there was also uh, a black prominent a prominent black music station in new york refused to play some girls when it was released uh or i'm sorry refused to play miss you because they said that it, the 
It was deemed to be too offensive racial with the racial attitudes of the album and the band. Additionally, the title track attracted controversy with the line, Black girls just want to get effed all night. I just don't have that much jam. Hard to believe that that would cause a problem in 1978. Uh, well, it did, and Jesse Jackson got involved in it and said that he was going to boycott the album and the band and so if, if they didn't do something about it. So eventually the president of Atlantic considered censoring the line, so then the president of the Rolling Stones records raced out and issued this statement. It never occurred to us that our parody of certain stereotype attitudes would be taken seriously by anyone who heard the entire lyrics of the song in question. No insult was intended. If it was, if any was taken, we sincerely apologize. Well, I don't know. That goes back to the whole question of this whole series is does controversy help or hurt? I think once again, in this one, it probably helped them out quite a bit. I don't think anybody took them too seriously other than the zealots on the on the on the far ends but any who's is there it is this is by far not the only rolling stones album on this uh series i think there's three maybe four but uh there it is thank you so much for watching as always spatula city records buy nine get one free all of our records are ultrasonically cleaned and free shipping on orders of 50 dollars or more